This is a Squeeze podcast. We're your shortcut to being informed. Squeeze Kids! It's your daily news fix. Fun, free, fresh. Good morning and welcome to Squiz Kids Today, your fresh take on what's happening in the world around you. I'm Bryce Corbett. It's Tuesday, May 31. In Squiz Kids Today, new opposition leaders named Queen Lizzie's Big Bash in London, the first Indigenous language AFL call, and how dolphins pick their own names. That's what's making news, kid style. The Lowdown. So, you know, last weekend we had a federal election which gave the country a new government and prime minister, right? Well, the ripple effect of the election was still being felt yesterday with the appointment of two new leaders for the major political parties who will form the opposition. In the Australian political system, you see, you have the political party in government, which for the next three years or so will be PM Anthony Albanese's Labour Party, and then you have the party or parties who make up the opposition, which, for the next three years or so, will be the Liberal and National parties, who together form what's known as the Coalition. Coalition is a fancy political word for a team. And yesterday, the Liberal Party got together and chose Queenslander Peter Dutton to become the new opposition leader, replacing former PM Scott Morrison. While the National Party which traditionally is a party that represents Australians from the bush and regional centres, chose fellow Queenslander David Littleproud as their new leader, replacing Barnaby Joyce. And if you're keen to know more about how our system of government works, and let's face it, why wouldn't you be, be sure to check out the excellent series, The Sensational World of Civics, we produced in association with the Museum of Australian Democracy in Canberra. It's on our website, squizkids.com.au, or... Follow the link in today's episode notes. Spin the globe. Each day we give the world globe a spin and find a news story from wherever it stops. And today we've landed in jolly old England, which is preparing for a jolly old party with the Queen's Jubilee just around the corner. Street parties are being planned all over the country. Red, white and blue bunting is being strung out. The Union Jack flag is expected to be flying everywhere you look as the nation prepares to celebrate 70 years of the Queen sitting on the throne. No, not that throne, the actual throne. Stop sniggering and get your mind out of the gutter. Queen Elizabeth II is the first British monarch to reach a platinum jubilee, which is really quite remarkable. And as well as all of England planning to throw a little party to mark the occasion, there'll be some impressive official celebrations too, including something called the Trooping of the Colour, which will take place in London and around Buckingham Palace on Thursday. Think loads of horses, soldiers and musicians marching in uniform. Think an Air Force flyover and members of the royal family watching on and waving royally from the balcony of Buckingham Palace. It's called Pomp and Ceremony, and no one does it better than the Brits. Sport time! There's been plenty going on this week in the sporting world to mark the fact that it's Reconciliation Week, including the Indigenous round of the NRL that took place over the weekend. And the AFL has gotten in on the action too, with history being made on Saturday in Darwin when local woman Sylvia Nulpunjit became the first woman to commentate an AFL match in an Indigenous language. Sylvia called the game in the Yongnu Mata language, which is widely spoken by Aboriginal people in Arnhem Land, and her call went out on the Yongnu radio to an audience of thousands. Meanwhile, speaking of NRL, Queensland named its side for the upcoming State of Origin game yesterday, picking Brisbane Bronco Young Gun and proud Indigenous man Selwyn Cobbo to run on the wing, despite having only played 19 games in the NRL. That's amazing. The New South Wales Blues named their team on Sunday, with new kid on the block 18-year-old Joseph Suwali getting a call-up to start off the bench. And while I have you, don't forget to check out the excellent Squiz Kids shortcut we've done on Reconciliation Week. Available to all Squiz Kids for School subscribers and to parents who've signed up to our Apple subscriber specials. 
Links to free trials of both are in today's episode notes. Animal Kingdom When you were born, your parents gave you a name. But did you know that baby dolphins name themselves when they're only a few months old? Every little dolphin creates for itself a unique blend of whistles, chirps and squeaks to identify itself. Researchers call them signature whistles, and no whistle is alike. Cool, right? Even cooler, scientists have now discovered that signature whistles are influenced by where a dolphin lives and how many other dolphins it lives with. For example, dolphins that live in areas with lots of seagrass have signature whistles that are higher in pitch and shorter in length. Dolphins that live in muddy waters make sounds for their names that are lower in pitch and last longer. Imagine that. Dolphins are believed to be the only creatures in the animal kingdom that create their own unique names. And before you tell me that humans do that too, I'll remind you that there are a boatload of Bryces out there in the wide world. Sadly, as special as my mum says I am, my name is not unique. This Squiz Kids Salute is brought to you by the Fred Hollows Humanity Award, which, for the last 10 years, has recognised awesome Year 6 kids who are doing positive things in their community. And today, we salute Scarlett Tonkin, who was named a winner in last year's awards for the amazing volunteer work she did for a women's shelter in her hometown of Adelaide. Determined to do something to help out people less fortunate than herself, Scarlett decided to make earrings to sell to raise money for the women's shelter, raising $3,500 in the process. Wow. In an interview with Squiz Kids, Scarlett said it was one small thing she could easily do that would help to make a big difference in lots of women's lives. Now, if you or a Year 6 student you know has done something to show compassion and kindness in your community, you can nominate for the 2022 Fred Hollows Humanity Award. Just visit hollows.org forward slash au forward slash humanity award. That link is also in your episode notes. And keep listening for an upcoming Q&A with all of last year's winners. Time for the quiz. This is the part of the podcast where you get to test how well you've been listening. Question number one. How many years has Queen Elizabeth II been on the British throne? That's right, it's 70. Question number two. What's the name of the new opposition leader in Australia? Yeah, it's Peter Dutton. Question number three. Which marine mammals name themselves with a unique signature whistle when they are only a couple of months old? That's right, I'm talking about dolphins. Shout out. It's May 31. On this day, 14 years ago, Usain Bolt broke the world record for 100 metres, running it in 9.72 seconds. That is fast. It's also a special day for these Squiz kids celebrating a birthday today. Rigel from Yass, Eliza from Park Orchards, Emerald from Wesburn, Lana from Forest Lake, Alex from North Perth, and Sylvia, who's listening all the way over there in Bahrain. And a belated birthday shout-out goes to Georgie from West Footscray. And classroom shout-outs today go to Class 6N and Mr Dover at Preston West Primary School. Class 3-6 Mauve with Mrs Broom at Liverpool West Public School and all the students in Room 9 at Heathridge Primary School. Don't forget, if you've got a birthday coming up and you want a shout-out, or if you're after a classroom shout-out, drop us a line at squizkids at thesquiz.com.au. Well, that's all we have time for. Thanks for listening to Squiz Kids today. We'll be back again tomorrow. In the meantime, you know what to do. Get out there and have a most excellent day. Over and out.